ritual humiliation. No problem. I can give you what you want. I'm sorry. Right? My life's a mess. I found that. Emotionally, I'm incompetent. I know. I can't express feelings. Have to cover them up with a smart cut of abuse. Intellectually, I'm a hypocrite. Yes. Able to dissect, diagnose, treat the faults and flaws of every person I've got in my own. I wonder if we believe the king will ever come like him with his candle again. I love you, Judith. Those three words, I love you. They are the truffle you find after sliding through the shit. I'll, I'll change, I'll try. Marriage isn't five furlongs in the flat at a spring afternoon in York. It's four miles over fences at Newton Abbott on heavy ground with November mist descending. That's better. Do I detect a smile? So long as I get a smile out of you, I'll know that you've you've not really left me. Not, not here. Oh, please, Judith, don't cry. Come on, we can work this out. We're intelligent, sensitive people. We can see our way through this mess. Thank you. Thank you. I owe you one. Look me up whenever you're in the basket maker's arms. The uh, study's at the front, dining room, utilities, kitchen's down there, and this is the living room. Right, living room first. Oh. Fitz. You don't want to leave me. You want ritual humiliation. I'm selling right? the house. There's not a problem. You can we have anything you want. I'll give you what you want. Look, I'll I don't listen want anything to me. I'll use all the words. I'll, I'll sign anything you'd like to sorry. My life's a mess. What? I'm perfectly able to look after Katie. I expect you to do the same for Mark. What? I get Katie, you get Mark. That's the deal. Oh, I see. You get the lochs in the mighty mountains and the glens of the highlands, and I get the toxic waste dump. Is that fair? If you care to sign these papers, everything can be settled amicably. Marriage isn't a five for a long race on the flat on a fine spring day in York, Jane. You're not funny. Can you come back another time? He's about to turn nasty. In the car and go. I'm being far too civilised about this, Fitz. You have to learn to let your anger out. Celebrate it. Express it. Otherwise, one day it'll just turn on you like a badly treated dog. Take it for walkies. You've got to throw it a stick. You've got to give it a bone. It's the only way you'll ever be free. Free. Bitch. Harridan. Harpy. Witch. Wife. Fitz, I'll send you the bill. Out there is hatred, confusion, and bedlam. People without direction, wandering blindly. Desperate people, hungering for certainty in a world of snowflakes. But in here is fellowship, love, and peace. But these are those who have surrendered themselves to the Lord. Amen. Now, uh, Joa, would you care to read? Charity beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Thank you, Joanne. You're right, please. Dean, would you like to finish the chapter? Dean. Dean, read. Read the book. Do what Mr. Kenneth tells you. When that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now, we see through a glass darkly. Oh, Mars. Kenneth and I love walking holidays too. Oh, we do, especially in the Lake District. Very special to us, isn't it, darling? It's where we spent our honeymoon. Excuse me, because I think there's a young man here I want to meet. Hello. I'm delighted you brought him along. Never too early to start. You don't see the world through a glass darkly. 
You see it through your fingers. I see you. You see me. So glad you could come this week. Do you? And I think it's great that you passed first time. Now, what does that say about the power of prayer? Hello. Let me say hello. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Good night. Oh, bless you. See you later. Taking Dean back to the factory. I want to make sure he knows what to do while I'm away. Will you be long? Goodbye. Yeah, I'll see you in the morning, 8 o'clock sharp. I'll be ready. Good night. All right, young man. <laughs> sure, Willie. Yes, Mr. Michael. Good night. Bye. Uh, Joanne, can I give you a lift? Have you seen Katie Fitzgerald, eh? Rosie, Rosie! Rosie, have you seen our Katie? She's staying behind. It's not a soccer night. She's not here anymore. What is she sick? She's gone. What kind of gone? To another school. What? Rosie? Rosie, don't be scared. It's me. It's me. Oh. That was a shite school anyway. Got away in good time then? Yep. Kenneth's so fussy about punctuality. If you're a minute late... Michael was ready by seven. Sitting waiting. Norma, is everything... Ginny? Ginny? Is everything all right? With you and Michael? Michael? Oh, yes, yes. No, it's... What's um... wrong? Suspicious. How long have you been suspicious? Ever since she came to the church. I feel so stupid. If you were suspicious, who else was? Who else knows? Michael. He said he didn't. You told him. And who else? This filthy little dog. Up in. Better than the school bus. Charity beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. You read those words so beautifully the other day. Thank you. And they are such beautiful words, aren't they? Yes. Yeah, they are such beautiful words. Is Mr. Trent at home? Mr. Trent is not at home. Mr. Trent is in Cardiff with his brother, moving his mother to their sister's home. Mr. Trent will not be back until tomorrow, as I'm sure he must have told you. I've 
got something to show you. Look at them. Look at them. What's the matter? I can't even look at them. You find them disgusting? They make you feel sick. Because I tell you, I tell you, they make me feel sick, utterly sick. <laughs> sick, no. It's not. It's not sickening. It's not disgusting. Only the photos make it look like that. How can you stay? We love each other. He said he loved you, did he? He does love me. And I love him. You believe that, do you? It's true. We do love each other. We want to live together. We want to get married and... Married? Yes, because... He's already married. He'll get a divorce. Divorce? Marriage is a holy sacrament. You can't believe that Kenneth... Oh, God help you. Surely you can see that he'll never, never... He will. For the baby. I don't know, no. I don't know what to do. She... What? Oh, bless you, Norma, bless you. Safe sex is breast worship. <laughs> Come play in my wardrobe. I'll tie you and tease till you say please. Oh, God, hello? Well, don't you say hello when you lift the phone? No, this is not a dirty phone call. Yes, this is your daughter's erstwhile husband. Charming. Didn't used to hang up when you thought you were on a good thing, did you? Hello, yes, it's me again, Vlad the Impaler. Is my wife there? She is there, I'd like to talk. Where? She didn't have any friends. None of her own. There are friends. Well, just give me the number then, will you? Look, I wanted to talk to my daughter and my wife, you old bast... Sorry, sorry. Slap wrists. Mustn't lose my temper. I'd like at least to talk to Kate. Right. Well, will you convey a message to her? Will you ask her to phone me at the house? Can you manage that? Please. Thank you. You're very kind. A case for patricide in a nutshell. Have you told your parents? How are they going to take it? What are they going to say? Have you told them? No. But you can't just carry Kenneth on as well. Kenneth. He'll talk to them first. Do you mind if I use the loo? Uh, no, it's uh, upstairs. I know where it is. Maybe you're right. I'm about to tell my parents first. Kenneth will speak to them later. She knows where it is. Ginny. She knows. She knows where it is. She's been here before he's brought her here. Here. I suppose he took her upstairs, upstairs to our bedroom. I suppose they... Ginny, shut up. Now listen. I have always tried to be a good Christian, but... Oh, God, help me. Help us. Do you realise what you're doing to him? You ruin him. You only care about the baby. You don't give a damn what it'll do to... You'll ruin his career. He'll have to leave. He'll never get another position. And his family, his mother. You selfish little bitch. You did it deliberately, didn't you? You knew what you were doing. You led him on. You came to the fellowship and you... Oh, God, the fellowship. Mind if I ring my dad and ask him to collect me? That won't be necessary. No, you can stay the night here. Here? Talk to Kenneth tomorrow. <laughs> I can't stay the night here! Please, I, I can't stay the night! Staying here! <laughs> Right, 
Bye bye, Michael. Love to Norma. No problems, Mr. Michael. Right, good boy. I'll put the kettle on. Fisher has some lost eight, four, five, occasionally six later. Mainly fair, good. Jammer by his number. Very Got Michael at the yard. Everything all right? Everything... Virginia's in the dining room. Virginia, this is monstrous. You surely can't believe it, any of it. The truth, Kenneth. The truth. Fantasies, that's all they are. They are not fantasies! She's 16 years old. She's 30 years younger than I am. That is a girl. Well, her imagination runs riot. Michael. I wasn't aware of it, but perhaps she did have a crush on me. I mean, girls at that age often do get a crush on an older teacher. They, they, they start fantasizing about... Is she fantasizing about being pregnant? Pregnant? She told you that? Yes. You take her word against mine. It's not just her word! What then? Has somebody been slandering me? Even I have enemies. You mean malicious gossip? No. Virginia. No, 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 no. Virginia. And we've always trusted each other. All I ask is that you trust me now. Kenneth. Kenneth, you're here. Tell her, Kenneth. Please tell her. What are you doing? I love you. You're out of your mind. I told you, the girl's fantasizing. She's sick. Sick? Sick, yes, a sick child. I'm not a child. I'm pregnant. You're lying. She's lying. Ginny. Most grievously. Oh, forgive me. Oh, forgive me. Forgive me. Frankie Foster for the Northern Area Championship. And uh, Foster were down for the first time in his career. So no doubt, uh, Northeast promoter Gus Robinson manages Ellison. Here we are. Thinks this just might be a shortcut to the title, but he's looks as though he's got a lot to do. Has Joanne ever stayed away before, Mrs. Barnes? Oh, mm, oh, Mary. Right. Jane. No, Jane never. Barnes, I mean, never without letting us know. To step down from a direct challenge of the champion and uh, give some. I've sat by that phone all night. I couldn't think what else to do. How old is she? She's seventeen. I shared a birthday last month. Is she a party? I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Mr. Barnes. She's not the party type. Is that First Communion? Oh, yes. She loved that day. Favourite ever, she says. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, that's a brilliant right hook. I don't think his legs are going to get him up, are they? They're a bit uh, rocky, and no, quite right. Would it be possible to take this photo? Yes, sir. I would like it back. Oh. I hate to lose any bit of her. A... 
It's the only solution. What is? Abortion. I don't know. Well, in normal circumstances, we couldn't countenance such a thing. But... Quick. Painless. And Joanne's parents need never know. Nobody need ever know except us. Uh, I think Norma's right. It's one solution. It was God's will that I became pregnant. I'm not having an abortion. I'm having your baby. I'm going home now. I'm going home and I'm going to tell my parents that I'm pregnant. Kenneth? I want you to come with me. With you? He's the father. There's no need to tell your parents that Kenneth is the father. But I do. I'm going to tell my parents. I'm going to tell the whole school. Um, Joanne. Wait. Oh, look at you. Oh, you look a sight. Here. Hmm? Now, come on. You don't want to go home and face your parents looking like that. You frighten them to the death, wouldn't you? Now, don't look so tragic. Cheer up, eh? It doesn't suit you. Now. Would you like to try a smile? Just a little smile? There, that's better. That's much better. Isn't that better? Oh, yes, yes much, much better. better. Yes. Now, no more conflict, no more division. We are all united as humble servants of the Lord. Let us pray for his guidance. Joanne, let us pray. There's something about the family, sir, I don't... Door to door, local search, local radio and TV. He... But we know this already, don't we? He watched a boxing match, sir. Come again? Joanne's dad. He didn't seem bothered. Just watched the fight. Is that a crime? I have an instinct about this, sir. What do you want to do? I want Fitz to talk to him. <sighs> have you got something to say? No, sir. Nothing at all? No, sir. Well, you may as well piss off then, mightn't you? Sir. Reaching for the back phone. Lots of school, sports day, school trips. Oh, Joanne's very involved at school. And not just on the work side, socially as well. Any boyfriends? Joanne, I mean. Joanne's a good girl. Hi, Katie. Of course, she's not got those hormones pumping through her yet. I'm sure I won't be ready when she is. Good girl. Katie is the goodest, most intelligent, the funniest, the most attractive girl the universe has ever seen. And one day she's going to be snogging on the doorstep with some spotty string of slime not good enough to clean her shoes. I know it, and I'm never going to be ready for it. No. It doesn't reflect on us or our kids if they start to explore their sexuality. Perhaps. Joanne is not that kind of girl. Have you any idea, however strange? Excuse me. Hello? Joanne, is that you? Hello? Yes? Oh. I'm sorry. No, there's no news, Joanne. Silver in the World Championships. Yes. Back in '86, and fall in Seoul in '88. Father Orion. Wanted to know if there was any news on Joanne. Ali wants to help. A uh, parish priest, did he? Yes. Joanne used to be very devout, but well, she hasn't been going for a few months. So. You know what they're like at that age, the young ones. I 
I take it you've tidied up. No. This is just a shield. I Well, her mother said she used to be very devout. Well, even so, you'd expect a few pop stars in the world, wouldn't you? Cliff Richard, maybe, or the Pope. You buy me another beer? It's your round. I'm temporarily embarrassed. She said too many. Two halves and whiskey, please. <sighs> Look, his daughter's missing. Mm -hmm. The one thing you cannot admit to his wife or himself is that dank sewer stink coming up from his guts that tells him she's in trouble. Yes. She's like a doctor, she's like a dentist. The last person you want to see when there's trouble is a detective whose very existence confirms your worst fears. Face it, Panhandle, the last person anybody wants to see is you. Judas pretending to leave me again. What? What did I say? You can spot a guilty cop in a football crowd and not notice World War Three in your living room. Even I you've seen my living room. Have a nice evening on your own, Fitz. I think you'd dish me. The headmaster is expecting us. Excuse me, young man, this is a school. That's where I started. Good morning. Kenneth Chant. How do you do? I'll ask her full mistress to send some of her friends along to speak to you. You can be disturbed in there. Show me a moment. Outfits. So really, you're her only friend. It's all right, Sarah. We just want to make sure that Joanne's safe and well. You're not going to get her into any trouble. You're in the year below Joanne, right? Yes. Didn't she have any friends in her own year? Did Joanne have a boyfriend? No. My parents thought she was too young for that. So were you pals with Joanne outside the school? Did you go to raves and all that? No. Well, her parents wouldn't let her. They were very strict. Wouldn't even let her wear makeup. And she wanted to? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she wanted to. Well, she wanted to be like all the other girls. She said she couldn't wait to get away from home. She said once she wanted to run away to London. Thank you, Sarah. You said her parents were strict. How strict? I mean, did they ever hit her? Sometimes. Oh. Well, thanks. You've been very helpful. Don't tell Wise. I have to tell him something. You'll have her down as a runner. Well, she might be. <sighs> show me a girl who runs away, and I'll show you a girl who's tried to make friends and failed. Joanne never even tried. I'll show you a girl who's tried alcohol, tobacco, soft drugs. That's not Joanne. I'll show you a girl who's had rows with her parents, who sagged off school. That's certainly not Joanne. She's not run away. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. In the cup which she hath filled, fill to her double. 
How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her, for she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death, and mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. This isn't a runaway. Cheesed off at home, sticks out of thumb, down to the smoke and never looking back. In a school uniform? It's what she was wearing. A sudden impulse, she runs off with a fella. She's up the jack and she runs off with a fella. Joanne has never tried tobacco, alcohol, drugs. She's never sagged school. That is not your typical runaway. Fit speak. Is it? Yes. Okay, carry on. I want proof. I want proof a crime has been committed. Right. Are you getting taller? Am I getting shorter? Yeah, police. Two five seven here. Your mum's not here yet. I thought we might get her Oh, see. Can I have an ice cream? Um. God, I'm so stupid. You know, I've come away without my wallet. Leave that. Mum left some money with her letter. Oh, I didn't know your mother was psychic. Got on my bag. Can I have a night now? Mm. No, you've got it all wrong. That is my daughter. I was picking up my daughter from school. Oh, well, they can't all be your daughters, can they? Look, I've seen you. Excuse me, just mind your own face. business. Yeah, 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 mind your own face. Piss off. Go on, arrest him. Go on, arrest him. Six foot one, 19 stone, Caucasian. Severe yellowing to the fingers of the right hand. Exhibits tremulousness when deprived of alcohol. <laughs> Permanently wrinkled suit. Old appendix scar. Large mold to the Thank left buttock. Thank you, butter. love. We've got it. Yes, that's him. That's my husband. And this is my wife. And this, as I have already explained, is my daughter. I should like the names and the divisional numbers of the arresting officers, oh, because when I finish with them, they will be sorry that they left traffic patrol. Come on, Katie, we're going home. Say it, Joanne. Say it. Say it. Confess. Save your soul. I have. I have. She can't. She can't say it. It's a sin that's stopping her. I have committed. I have sinned. I have corrupted. I have corrupted. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Forgive me. It's God's forgiveness you must ask, Joanne. Not mine. Not ours. Look, I must atone. <laughs> you must be punished. I must be punished. I must be punished. Come home, Joanne. Come home to your mum and dad. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whoever you're with, we can accept it. All that matters is that you're well. Any other problems, we can sort out, you, me and your dad. Is there anything you'd like to add, Mr. Barnes? My wife has said everything. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Lift up your voice with strength. Lift it up. Be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Oh, my God.
So if I cried unto thee, O Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. Lord, have mercy on this poor sinner. Lord, have mercy. She that hath committed iniquity. Forgive, Forgive her, O Lord. Lord. And grant redemption. She that hath sinned against thee. Forgive, Forgive her, O Lord. Lord. And grant redemption. She that hath done wickedly. Forgive, Forgive her, O Lord. Lord. And, and grant redemption. That she may enjoy the blessings of eternal life. Eternal life. Doors, Dean. Come on, get the box. Come on, Dean, get the. That's it. That's it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I have to go now, then, Dean. No questions. No questions asked.
Estamos chupando. Please quick fire. She's dying. Joanne, can you hear me? You can hear me, can't you? Yeah, we can't get anything out of her, so you ought to find another way in. She might have tried to top herself. She's three months gone and she's only 17. She's been sexually abused? No, but she's been into something, Daddy. Her body was covered in daub and, you know, signs, equations, stuff like that, you know. Yeah? Can I get some photographs? Mm -hmm. She had nasty bruising to her arms, to her knees, which could be an attempted at abortion. And she had more pills inside her than boots. We need to find out where she was last week. I knew where. Look, see her again tonight. Can we give you a lift home? Oh, we're not going home. No, no, of course not. Come on, we'll get some tea. Come on. Joanne? My name's Fitz. I'm not a policeman. I'm a shrink. Which probably means you don't want to talk to me either. Accidental. Nobody hurt. Nothing suspicious. Just plain bloody carelessness. Nobody. Who called you? Lad over there. Goalkeeper short of a full squad, if you ask me. Fierce, pal. I'm Detective Constable Harriman. You work here? What's your name? No one. Nothing. Shall I start with something a bit easier? Dean Saunders. You reported this fire. 
Yes. You said somebody was dying. The first angel sounded and therefore hail and fire mingle with blood. All flesh is grass. Anagram, eight letters. What? I'm sorry, officer. You're unlikely to get anywhere with Dean. Off you go, lad. I'll pay you for the day. You all right, sir? All flesh is grass. Dean? Home. So, um, my nod towards equal opportunities. I have to do one thing. He called us as well as the fire yeah, service. The boy panicked. He, he threw his cigarette in the waste bin. Yeah. Yeah. You're sacking him. Well, well, where else would he get a job? He'd just end up on the street making your job more difficult. Have to do one's bit. I will not pass on the other side. Jesus. Morning. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry to say at this stage I will be unable to answer any questions. However, we do have a short statement. Missing teenager Joanne Barnes was today found in a shopping centre near her home. She was semi-conscious. Any persons who may have information that may help the police in these investigations may contact DCI Wise and St Road Police Station. Confidentiality is assured. She is in intensive care now and is seriously ill. But we understand that her condition is stable. We would again appeal to anyone who may have seen her over the past week or who has known of where she was yes. in the incident room. Let me get back. No. Eight, three, five. No, I'm just going to the They blame themselves, your mum and dad. Do you know? They think they're to blame for what happened to you. Do you think that, Joanne? They love you so much. They're so proud of you. They can't understand what's happened to you. They think they're to blame. I don't know what they've got to be guilty about your mum and dad. Maybe they think they were too strict with you. Maybe they regret hitting you. <laughs> when they were angry with you, they did hit you. <laughs> Not even when you told them you were pregnant. Oh, Dad. Elaine, come. Elaine, come. You couldn't tell them. I don't know how many of you have heard the news about Joanne Barnes, but I have to tell you that she is at this very moment lying dangerously ill in hospital. Now, whether she was the victim of an attack or whether her wounds were self-inflicted is not yet determined, but the police are investigating the matter and will, I'm sure, be appealing for information from anyone who knows Joanne. Brothers and sisters, while we wish them every success with their inquiries, I believe that we would be wise to keep our distance. We all know how deep and widespread is the prejudice and the bigotry against non-established churches such as ours, which the tabloid newspapers delight in encouraging. So let us protect ourselves and our church from the scandal mongers. Now I know that you'll all wish to join me 
in offering a prayer for Joanne's recovery. Almighty and eternal God, here thou we beseech thee our humble offering for a member of our flock, Joanne Barnes, who lies grievously ill in hospital. You'll have that idiot to do He's it. not an idiot. You didn't tell me. He knows how to work the machine. It's, it's his job. He's always had a soft spot for the girl. You must know that. I thought it would be all right. Well, it isn't all right, is it? You fool, Michael, you bloody fool. That boy starts blabbing. Why isn't he here? Where is he now? Ambulance, please, quick fire. She, she's hurt. She's dying. Oh, flesh is grass! Get me! You little bitch. She couldn't run. Mr. Kenneth, please. Look, he's sorry. Where did she run? Away. R run away. Out. Out? Out of the factory? Yes. Out. Away. Was anyone here? Did anyone see her? No one see. No, no, no one see. Right. Nothing. No one all right. No all right, no Dean. Nothing. All right. Nothing. It's no not your fault. No Stop it now. Stop crying. Stop it. <laughs> right, Dean. Listen to me. If anyone asks, are you listening? Yes. Yes, Mr. Kenneth. No one comes. No one asks any questions. You tell them. You tell them about Mr. Michael, who's always looked after you, who's always cared for you. And Mr. Kenneth, a good man. A man of God. Your minister. You understand, Dean? Weren't you paracetamol? I wasn't drunk. Yeah. I wasn't. Why don't you sleep upstairs? That's your mother's room. <sighs> Where was I? Good puzzle, this. Not one answer, is it? Oh, God, you haven't. Tell me you haven't. You have. I was up all night arranging this. You mind your own business. I was helping. I don't need your help. What do you know, anyway? Well, you know, I'm in a big bang, a big crunch. But like you said, you don't need my help. Well, try me. Come on, don't play games. Try me. Right, look. The universe begins at the 10 to the 43rd second after the Big Bang. Planck time. Warping or walking? Yeah, Max Planck. Before that instant, the normal laws of nature simply don't apply. It's just a boiling mass of space and time. Anarchy? Yeah, cosmic anarchy. 
Then the core bursts and the rips in space in time appear as these uh, cosmic strings. We've got to stop smoking those bus tickets. Son. Uh, then the four main forces separate. Enlighten me. They divide into nuclear, electromagnetic, um, something else, and gravity. I can't believe you flunked out of your A-levels. I'll give you a grant. You don't have any money? Well, I'll bloody earn some. It'd be worth it to see you not waste your life. Uh, well, on the scale of these equations, my life makes no odds anyway. Yeah, well, not anybody else's life. Now, what's this one? That one. 146. Uh, yeah, you got me on that. I don't know, I think they're talking about uh, the beginning of life and the end. Birth and death? Yeah. The business? Absolutely right. I could have phoned and I should have. I'm very sorry. Yes. Yes, they were in my wallet. Look, I'm sorry, Katie. Katie, Katie, I was not pissed. I was not. Where did you learn that word? Oh, fine. Blame everything on me. I was not pissed. I was working. Ask Mark. All right. All right. No, not you. It's the doorbell. I'll have to go. It might be urgent. No, not more urgent than you, obviously. Katie? Katie? If you're Jehovah's Witnesses, I've got a Rottweiler. Sorry, that was Katie. Yeah, she just taken up the football yesterday. Had the tickets in my back pocket. Didn't know how to get hold of me while we were in the hospital. She thought I was out gambling her down the pub. You all right? Joanne's dead. She was murdered. What do you notice? There are no smudges. So we're not looking at some elaborate foreplay. She is naked. Willing, obviously. You couldn't do those drawings on her if she was struggling, right? After sex, well, in that case, we're not looking for a wham bam, thank you, ma'am sort of individual. He lingers, he talks to her, he explains what all the symbols are about, maybe even shows her them in the mirror. This is no spotty adolescent. Or even, he did the drawings after he made her take the pills, in which case she couldn't struggle at all. Did all those drawings on a dying body. Now that's power. That's arrogance. A dying girl, and she was just a canvas for his artistry and his so-called intellect. What is all this? You don't know about Planck time then. 
Planck time. The instant just before the universe was created, just after the Big Bang, and there was nothing but a boiling soup of space and time, no rules and no law, just anarchy and chaos. Now, Joanne's lover saw sex in death and vice versa. He was a morbid and manipulative lover who, in the end, wanted to combine the two in one moment of perfection. Somebody's done this to you. Who was it? Who made you take those pills? Who gave you the drink? Who drew those things in your body? Who is it? Not die. Not die. Oh, flesh. Flesh is grass. All flesh is grass. I've heard that before. What's John's church? St. Timothy's. Dean Saunders. Who? Start the fire. Dean Saunders. Community care case. He kept talking really weird like that. All flesh is grass. He said it. Bring him in for questioning. We'll take Beck with you. I said Saunders had an accident, but I think that's bollocks. Can I help? Afternoon, Mr. Trant. I'm impressed. One small fire, two visits, two offices. Is Mr. Saunders around? He? Why? No, he, he's not in work today. What, is he sick? Oh, that's this bug that's going around, I think. Could we have his home address, please, sir? Why no? Really? One small fire? No, we need to question him concerning another matter. What's that, then? His address? Well, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you've got to have his address for maximum insurance. Oh, the fire, uh, my records, filing cabinet's ashes, I'm afraid. You must know where he lives. Uh, How many employees on your books? 34. Look, he, he should be in tomorrow. When's well, your office down, you give him the day off. This is wasting no time. He's not in any trouble. And that means wasting police time, which is a criminal offence. A law-abiding citizen like yourself, sir, you wouldn't want a record. So just tell me where he lives and where haven't you been. Please. That's better, isn't it? Bit of politeness to get you further in the end. No, I think of it, uh... I may have Dean's address in the file of that. Thank you, sir. We'd be most grateful. Hello, Dean. Father Orion. Dear Spenhalligan, this is Dr. Fitzgerald. It's about Joanne. If you could just spare us five minutes of your time, please. Let's come into the sacristy. Why is it whenever you're in church, you always feel as if you're being watched? Because you are, Dr. Fitzgerald. I saw you lecture once. Oh. That level of cynicism must be hard to sustain. Not at all. At times like this, I can only remind myself that there is a purpose to everything. That God's love reveals itself in all our fates. That level of idealism must be hard to sustain. It is. Extremely. But you, Dr Fitzgerald, as an unbeliever, how do you reconcile yourself to such tragedies? I don't. I don't even try. As a psychologist, my job is to listen and understand. Well, that must be difficult. Well, your job is to listen and forgive. That must be even harder. Well, I'm not the one who forgives. Hmm. Wish I could believe that. Still, we're both confessors, Father. You're as exposed to the dirty realities of life as I am. That'll not disturb your faith. In man, not in God. Father, could you tell us about Joanne, please? Of course. She was always a very devout girl. Regularly attended Mass and benediction. But we haven't seen her here since Christmas. I believe she was recruited into a local sect. Who recruited her? Her headmaster, I believe. Trent. You know him? Yes. Do you? No, but I'm not entirely happy about the way he uses his position at school. To do what? To recruit young people into his sect. Could you describe these young people? I mean, do they have anything in common? Yes. They're all rather lonely individuals. And they're all girls. I take it, Doctor, that you're a lapsed Catholic. Why? Because you're so serious in your mockery. <laughs> Don't knock the mock, Father. But you're right anyway. Bless me, Father, for it is 22 years since my last confession. The next one should be worth hearing. I shall look forward to that. Thank you, Father. 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 Dean? 
What is it, Dean? She's in heaven now. Who is? Joanne. Help me. Please, Father, help me, please. What's the matter with you, Dean? Me. You. What were you saying about Joanne? The box. In the box. Come on, come on. Come on. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. What do you want to tell me, Dean? Dean. Definitely furry. I had this vacation job once when I was a student. Postman, you know? You can believe the number of different kinds of letterboxes there are. Big, white, generous ones, welcoming enough for a kid to get their arms through so they can take the key you don't have to carry one. Vicious little snappers you can hardly get a postcard through. Vertical ones high up, vertical ones low down, just about do your back in. And then they have these ones with furry brushes inside them. When you put your hand in, it was all squidgy like you were being disinfected. <clears throat> About John Barnes. Oh, yes. Could we speak to your husband, please? One moment, please. <clears throat> oh, hello again. Please come in. If you'd like to go through. Do some research, Doctor? You make any sense of this? Couldn't make head or tail of it. Yeah. You like this sort of thing? Uh, no, no, it was a Christmas present. How about you? No, oh, I gave up halfway through. Felt a bit let down, really. But I was going to find all the answers in there. Uh, well, you're looking in the wrong book. You think I'd find all the answers in there? Well, the answers are in there. Whether you find them depends on you. Do you believe in God, Doctor? I can never catch him in. Don't worry, I'm not going to try to convert you. Why not? Would you expect me to? Well, you do proselytise for your faith, don't you? Proselytise? Yes, you have recruited several of your pupils for your church. I wouldn't exactly say recruit. That's why I use the word proselytise. To convert from one faith to another. Yes, I do know the meaning of the word, Doctor. But you don't like it. And you won't have recruit. Or would you rather draft and list? Are you here to debate semantics with me? No, I'm here to talk about Joanne Barnes. Uh, can I offer you some tea? No, thanks. Coffee? No, thank you. Well, I don't think I can add anything to what you learned from young Sarah at the school. Oh, you know what she told us? Yes, of course. She reported to me later. She said that Joanne was lonely and that she was uh, having problems with her parents. When did you last see Joanne? Sunday night at our church. Your church? Yes. Well, surely you must have known that Joanne was a member of our church. Why must we? Her parents would have mentioned it. Well, she was there every Sunday night and sometimes during the week as well. Why didn't you mention this when we were at the school? Hardly seemed relevant to your inquiries. I mean, after all, she didn't go missing that night. She was at school the next day, as usual. How did she seem that Sunday night? No different from usual. I mean, she took her turn at reading a verse and her usual self. Are you a member of the church, Mrs Trent? Yes, um, my wife's a member. Oh. <gasps> Excuses, no doubt. Virginia hasn't slept since all this happened. It's left everyone at the school feeling shattered at the, the fellowship. Poor young girls, is such a waste of a life. Yes, that's why we wanted to catch the maniac that did it. Do that one more bloody time and I'll chop them off. 
Before you're cautioned. Before you see a solicitor. Before my boss starts interviewing you, you've got a chance. One chance, Dean, to come clean. Do you understand? Can I have some water, please? I know everything, Dean. I just want you to tell me. I've been to your flat. I've seen. We see through a glass darkly, then face to face. Face to face, you, me, now. I talked with Joanne. Before she died, she told me everything about you. The disgusting things you did. What you did to her. How you hurt her. Wrote those things. The things you said. Joanne told me everything, you little scumbag. And I'm nailing you. Make it easy on yourself. Confess. Confess now, Dean, or I'm throwing you to the wolves. A lovely girl like that. You touching her. Defiling her. Disgusting things you did to her will be done to you twice over. Confess or you're in trouble, Saunders. I swear! <laughs> He's in custody. He's just helping us with our inquiries. You know anything about his family? Uh, he never mentions them. All I know is uh, his mother died or, or ran away. I, I had no idea he... No idea of what? That his mind was so deranged. Yeah. yeah. I have to disagree with you there. I don't think what we saw at Dean's flat today was the work of a disordered mind. I would say it was the work of a classically tutored intelligence. A knowing, ordered considered brain, not exactly the way most people would think of Dean, would you say? No, uh, uh, I mean... What was his background? Special school, bullied, poor attendance, metalwork, art. Dean's, uh, his... Well, uh, that kind of... Uh... Yeah. What about yourself, Polly? University. Leicester. Hull. Engineering. Correct. Ah. And marriage, suburbia, working in daddy's factory. Sixties really passed you by, didn't they, Michael? God, I deserve this. That's some good, eh? Put a man down. Cheers. Cheers. A new win. Nasty. Just a minute. What's the gob on you for? I'm putting a man down. Join the party. I think you're making a mistake. I don't. Yeah, a bit like a doctor, really, aren't you? You've lost me. You tend to bury your mistakes. Come in. <laughs> He's innocent. Then why did he confess? Wise by name, thick by nature. Look, here's a list of Dean's Bible-thumping buddies. Everyone on it should be treated as a suspect, sir. Reading the Bible's not a crime. Particularly the trance. These are look Respectable, very... solid citizens? Yeah. Dean's just a scapegoat, sir. Just let me talk to them. Oh, yeah. Now, that'll go down well with Beck, wouldn't it? If he retracts his confession, what have you got? Not a lot. I just want a chance to get at the truth, if that's not too radical. Look, the confession's being typed up. In the meantime, if you want to speak to him, that's okay with me. And by the way, for today, your own teeth. Yeah? I'll look after them, floss them and clean them, and don't ever call me thick again. Me? What am I doing? Mirror. Tell me. Crying. Mum gone away. Kids. Pushing. Kicking. Calling names. Don't like fighting. School bell goes, you stay behind. Yes. Hide under the desk till the janitor throws you out. Dark. Cold. I'd still be waiting. Run through the fields.
through the bushes. Clothes torn, muddy. No one to notice. To ask after you. Cold in bed. Keep your clothes on. What do they call you? The smell. Every time you go into the classroom, what's that terrible smell? Please, miss, going off the windows open. Yes. Bring in air freshness. Spray you. But there was one teacher who looked after you. Treated you right. Miss Morgan. What did she teach? Art. You're good at drawing. Yes. Drawing. Copying. Like the writing on the walls? Yes. Copied. Copied Joanne. And me. He'd covered the wall of his flat with writing, like on Joanne. Kenneth's equations, all that. Th that's why they arrested him. Well, they'll break him down, they'll get it out of him. They'll get what out of him? No, he didn't dream all that up by himself. The, the, the psychologist, he said it was the work of a classically tutored mind, a clever brain. Oh, Kenneth. They'll be on to us, they'll be on to us. Sit down. Is there any chance that you could talk to Dean? He trusts you. Maybe he could He's just get to the police station. Yes. No. But what if he tells them about Joanne? What can he tell them? He saw nothing. Now, Virginia, you heard me tell the police that the last time I saw Joanne was at the prayer meeting on Sunday night. Yes. When was the last time you saw her? When we all... Think, Virginia. When was the last time you saw Joanne? At the last prayer meeting. Norma? At the last prayer meeting. Michael? They won't believe it. They'll know we won't... When was the last time you saw Joanne? At the prayer meeting. That's all we've got to say. What matters is that we all say it and then we're safe. Dean is deranged. He should have been put away years ago. You think they'll take his word against ours? The boy is guilty. He must be made to pay the price for his sin. Let us pray. What else? Men on fire. What else? Woman bleeding. What else? Flying glass. What else? Horse and pat. What else? Flowers. What else? Space. What else? A baby crying. What else? Joanne. Where is she? Through the mirror. The scraper. All flesh is grass. Did you give her tablets to him? No. Did you give her a drink? No. Do you know who did? No. Why did you confess? They said... Dean, you've made a statement to say that you helped Joanne to die. Is that true? No. You wouldn't do that? No. Why can't you say it? Why can't you say that word? Have you never said it to anyone? Have they never said it back to you? It's just a word to you. Say it. I don't... Stefan Kisko spent 16 years of his life banged up for a crime he couldn't possibly have committed. Looks odd, sounds odd, he must be the killer. And you know what finally sent him down? Hmm? A hastily sought and eagerly accepted confession that he only signed because he was confused and frightened and just wanted to go home to his mammy. Dean's confession was... was got under pressure. You can't afford to make a mistake in this one. Are you infallible? Yes, the other guy's an imposter. Look, all I'm asking is that you talk to him with me for five minutes. I'll just listen. Open number three, please. Right. Yeah, ten minutes or more, if it's okay. All right. Yes, let's look at that. Okay. Jesus. Key! Oh, God. Key! Key!
You think I'm to blame for Dean's death? Yeah. I'm not. But if I were, I'd expect a bit of sympathy from you, Jimmy. You know exactly how it feels. Are you all right? You haven't seen me like this, okay? Right. What's up? Barbara was a mate of mine. It gets to me now and again. No one's blaming you. Why should they? What for? What do you know? What have you heard? Albie gave you a load of bullshit. You let him go. He killed Bilbra. No one's blaming you. Piss off! <coughs> so, you told everyone. What? That Bilbra's death was down to me. I didn't. I didn't. Then it was you. Wrong. You're lying. Look, if you want to talk to somebody about this. Oh, Christ. You know what I'm going to say. But I'm going to say it anyway, right? Right. If you hadn't poked your nose in, that lad would still be alive. And Joanne's death would be solved. Everything would be boxed off. Boxed off? Yeah, boxed off. Dean killed himself. Joanne died terminating the pregnancy. Case closed. Dean killed himself because Joanne was murdered. There's more reason than ever for keeping the case open. Punch his bloody pilot with no more of it. I haven't been paid yet. I need an invoice. Any chance of a sub? No chance. You're wrong. Joanne was murdered and I'll prove it. This isn't necessary, you know. I'm just winding wise up. I'll manage, always have done, always will do. I do not need charity. I've just got to get on with my life, pay my bills, and lock the guilt monster away in the cellar until I feel strong enough to grapple with it. How long will that be? How many beasts are locked up down there? How long before they break down the door and tear you apart? No, that's me talking. I'm the doctor, you're the policewoman, remember? Do you see me directing the traffic? No, do you know why? It's not my area of expertise. Do not talk nuts to a monkey. Then stop talking shit to a panhandle. I'm your friend, aren't I? <laughs> Believe me, charity does not come into it. Is 250 enough? <laughs> you can give it back to me when I'll not pay you. Thanks. Look, I know it's a bit early, but... Yeah, but I could do with a drink as well. that cell alone what he must have felt michael what's done is done it should never have involved him michael don't blame yourself it's not your fault but it is if michael had done what he was supposed to do the boy would never have been arrested and we wouldn't be in this mess kenneth's right michael however as he died in police custody my instinct tells me they'll be eager to close the case oh kenneth do you think so i'm sure of it i just wish i could be as sure of dr fitzgerald but remember what we agreed we speak as a group, with one voice. As long as we're a group, we're invulnerable. I haven't done this in ages. Not with someone. Me neither. Not with Judith. I can't remember the last time. We always used to, and then sometimes we just stopped. 85. The Rioja. I think it's over, me and Judith. Really, this time, over.
Are you sure this is all right? A big, white, generous letterbox. I rest my case. <laughs> I think I should go, don't you? No. There's so much going on for you, Fitz. I don't think that I... Need I need you. I'll back you, Fitz, with Wise, with Jimmy, with anyone. Not that way. How? You know. I don't. Already anticipating failure, the retreat. Make me say everything, then you can absolve yourself from any responsibility. You didn't... Please want don't, Fitz. OK, I'll do it to me. I bring you into my home, having taken every precaution to ensure that it's as inhospitable as possible. And what message am I sending then? I'm giving you every chance, every opportunity for an escape route. Which means, of course, that then I can blame it all on you. I tried, I tried. She led me along, but she couldn't stay the distance. Look, I'm still covered in bruises from the last time, all the mistakes I made. So just make my life easy and go away, will you? Just leave me alone, bugger off. I think I love you. One nine-inch margarita with anchovies. You bastard! What? You've got the cheat to say a thing like that! Nine-inch margarita with anchovies. I don't like anchovies. Do you really think they'll leave us alone now? Oh, I'm sure they will. It'll soon be over this whole nightmarish thing. Darling, I'm so sorry. I'm so deeply sorry. I was weak and I fell. Virginia, I'm not worthy of you. But I'll never make that mistake again. I know. I do love you. I love you so much. Are you sure? No. Crappy paper, crappy cup of coffee. Morning. <sighs> we never did have that little chat, did we? Oh, God. Look, I'm sorry. Does Mum know? No, no, not yet. Your mother left me, if you remember. Hey? No, she didn't. She didn't leave, you drove her away because you're, you're a dickhead. Yes, well, that's a fair summary of the facts, probably. I'm older than her. Hardly. What do you expect me to do, spend the rest of my life like Cliff Bloody Richard? And that's my mother's.
keeping the pile of drawings found in Dean's bed? Cabinet. Right. Only that found his wardrobe. Yeah. You said his bed. No, no, I didn't. Yes, she did. Didn't she? Dean's bed, you said, yeah. What are you trying to say? You're doing the talking. No. No, come on, lads. Spit it out. Who was on top? How's <laughs> <laughs> my fees to date? No problems there. Eh? I expect you prefer cash. Fitz would like another week on Joanne Barnes. No chance. She's with the coroner in two days' time. Well, give it till then. Peck's one in that up now. Two people have died, boss. They both belong to the same religious sect, which includes Kenneth Trant, who is Joanne's headmaster, and Michael Trant, who is Dean's boss. Fitz would like to interview all four Trants, and I think we should agree to that. You were asking me to gamble police time and money. Double R's quits. I'll get a confession. OK, I'll give you 48 hours. I'm Penhaligan. Take Beck. No, Beck's not good to me. Can't handle us the way I work. Beck's too old-fashioned, too starsky and hot. She's only got one tune. I can't do it without her. I'll give you odds, four to six. One to two. God, you're one dearer than light bros. One to two, you get a confession. Done. You know Joanne was a Catholic? No. Oh, yes, very devout Catholic, according to a parish priest. So remember the Legion of Mary and attended regularly for benediction and confession. Never missed Sunday Mass. Till last Christmas. Whoever drew her to your church must have had a tremendous attraction for her. I'm sure he did. God. Acting through your husband? Yes. Drawing her to the Bible. Do you don't think it's perhaps possible that it wasn't the Bible that attracted her, but your husband? <laughs> Dr. Fitzgerald, she was a 17-year-old girl. My husband is a... A 46-year-old pin-up. Kenneth. A pin-up. I had a crush on my music master at her age, and he was no spring chicken. You know what girls are like at that age. I don't. I never found out. <laughs> Mrs. Trant, your husband is a very attractive man. I suppose it is just possible that Joanne might, well, have fancied him a bit. I never noticed anything to suggest that, and I'm sure Kenneth didn't. He did say that she was a shy, withdrawn sort of a girl, not the sort of girl to flaunt her feelings. Maybe, but that doesn't prove... No, we're not trying to prove anything, Mrs. Trout. We can't ask Joanne how she felt, so we're asking you. We're just thinking out loud. Just wondering if perhaps there's a possibility, the remotest possibility, that Joanne fancied your husband, even though he wasn't aware of it. It seems very unlikely. So it's possible. I didn't say that. So you're saying it's absolutely impossible. I didn't say that. I didn't say it was absolutely impossible. I didn't say that. I think you're not saying quite a few things. Can you live with that? I haven't done anything wrong. No, but somebody has, and you know who. Don't you think you've got a duty to tell us? I know where my duty lies, Doctor. I have always tried to live a... Joanne decent... Barnes is lying stiff on a slab. She's got marks all over her body left by some sick, demented soul. Please, I don't want to hear this. Her parents are banging the floor with grief. A good girl, Joanne. They kept saying that. Can't Look you stop sick him? bastard who is responsible for this good girl's death. Joanne is dead. Dean is dead. What does it amount to this decency of yours? £37,642 in the present financial year. That much? 18,400 at cancer research. 6,904 cerebral palsy. £2,005.23b 23 to the church restoration. £1,116 help the aged. A round thousand each to cystic fibrosis, guide dogs for the blind, children in need, and the police, widows and orphans. Plus several smaller cash payments to the local old, infirm and needy. I'm currently collecting for cancer research. Perhaps a donation might be in order. But you caught me a bit short, Mrs. Trent. She's lying. She's loyal. Next stop, Normas? No. Next stop, Sarah. She's yes! coming. One pound. You said 50 pence. Each way. Brian, more effort. Good clearance, good clearance. You don't find it better talking out here? Yes. Mr. Tramp seems to get on very well with the kids. 
Any time our teachers ever spoke to us, it was to threaten us with hellfire or detention, which was slightly worse. <laughs> oh, Mr. Trent's not like that. Oh, well, you're lucky. You find you can talk to him, okay? I mean, he doesn't mind if you come and tell him your troubles. So. Oh no. Um, I mean, he doesn't mind. No, he likes to know what's going on. He likes you to go and talk to him. Mr. Grogan, my history teacher. All the teacher said. It's the exams. It's a rough time. Don't suffer. It only takes a moment to go and see the principal. Yeah, and three hours to get out. Who's the called Tapid? Somebody had once said that he'd wash in the brain or something. He was barking, absolutely barking. But Grogan was different. He always seemed to know exactly what you were going through without the subject ever arising, you know? He used to make you cups of tea in his wee cubbyhole, get the ashtray out. Made you feel human, you know? That's what I call a real teacher. I'm surprised you preferred to talk to us here. Why? It's fascinating. New experience for me. Virginia Trant told us she thought it possible that Joanne fancied her husband a bit. What do you think? Fancied him? Did Ginny say that? What do you reckon? <sighs> bit of a giggle. I'm not sure, but I think she was a bit upset about it. Upset? Mm -hmm. About a schoolgirl taking a shine to Kenneth. She'd have had to be pretty insecure to feel upset about that. Was she? Insecure? Well, you've met Kenneth. Any woman married to him might feel a bit insecure, but he never gave her any cause. How do you know? Well, I'd have... Well, Ginny would have told me. Anyway, he didn't... Don't you think Kenneth would have been flattered by Joanne's patch? Might even encouraged it. A middle-aged man, getting the eye from a 16-year-old girl, a pretty girl. Don't you think he might have got a kick out of that? I know I would. He didn't notice. And he didn't need those kicks. So who got Joanne pregnant? If not Kenneth, you mean? If not Kenneth. For a psychologist, you're a pretty poor judge of character. <laughs> I'm better with women, aren't I? Dean made Joanne pregnant. He was sweet on her. You should have seen him at the meetings. He couldn't take his eyes off her, always pointing at her. He was crazy about her. You knew that, didn't you? Oh, yes, crazy about her. Crazy for her, maybe. But crazy in his head, only in his head. Classic, hopeless, romantic passion. He idealised her, but he never laid a finger on her. He never had a proper relationship with Joanne. He came to the house one weekend when Michael was away. He knew he was away, of course. Anyway, he pushed past me down the hallway into the sitting room, sat on my sofa. He had grease on his trousers. I wondered if it would wash off the sofa. He had his eyes closed and he was chanting from the Bible. I didn't pay it much attention. To be honest, it doesn't mean that much to me. I'm not sure that I believe at all. I made a mistake. I got too close. He touched me. I didn't like it. I told him. Still, his hands. I pushed him away. He came back. He, he wouldn't let go. He was, he was hurting. And all the time, this, this Bible stuff. And then the words changed to personal things about my body, you know. Crude, crass words for things. I walked out of the room, out of the house, into the town. Came home in the evening, nothing was missing. Now, Dean was never a thief. There was no sign that he'd ever been there. Well, save for the stain on the sofa. And Michael, what did he say? You did tell him? No! I didn't want to upset him. I didn't want to hurt him, to get him into any trouble. Kind. You don't believe me, do you? Why should I make it up? To divert attention from Kenneth. Did you meet him through Virginia? Yes. We were at school together. We met then. Ah, she saw him first. There was never anything between Kenneth and me. Nothing fulfilled. But you married him. He didn't ask me. He asked Virginia. And Michael asked you. That wasn't the question. You're obviously very attracted to Kenneth. Do you ever think if you'd married him? Mm, no point in thinking. <clears throat> Let's take it as read then that Kenneth Trant may have harboured thoughts about Joanne. She's a young girl. Saw a lot of her. Who could blame him for having those thoughts? The question, the life with a recommendation of a minimum of 20 years question is, did he act upon them? Tell me, Doctor. Is a man happier who acts on his instincts or who represses them? When you lit that cigarette, 
I know that look. I don't think it's Scott. You knew it too, and you were jealous as hell because he lit my cigarette. I'm sure I have nothing to teach you about jealousy. Could I have another one, please? You love him, don't you? Who? Kenneth. Kenneth? Kenneth. You love him. You've always loved him. You've always loved him. Ever since that first dance at the church hall. What was it? Mungo Jerry with David Essex? You remember. You remember. You fell for him then. You fell in love with him and you've been in love with him ever since. No! no. And then he went and married Virginia. The idiot. He'd been so much happier if he married you. Kenneth and Virginia have a very happy marriage. Did Kenneth Grant have sex with Joanne Barnes? No. Cross your heart and hope to die. I'm beginning to think that you're jealous of Kenneth. He is just not that sort of a man. He has never been unfaithful to Virginia. With any other girl? Any girl, any woman. You can keep your cigarettes, thanks. Do you know Sarah Jennings? Sarah? Schoolmate of Joanne's. Classmate, actually. Out of all the girls at school, he picked me. He's always wanted a child and she could never have them, so... As soon as I leave school, we're going to live together. He's a wonderful man. I feel special when he's there. He loves me more than anything. I've ever won anyone else. Oh, Kenneth's wonderful. I, I love him. I love him. Right, so that the paper shredded and drops down, then the hydraulic ram compresses it. It comes out of the block. What happens there? It goes for recycling. Right. We saw your wife this morning. She dropped into the station for a chat. She was dressing the church hall earlier, she was telling us. She had pollen all over her fingers. What's the attraction of all these new religious groups? Hmm? Rock combos singing for Jesus. One world weirdos, Bible thumpers. I'm a left footer myself. Last. We didn't read the Old Testament. Do you believe all these old Hebrew stories are true? I mean, literally true. Every word. Yes. It's on this page. Your wife thinks it's a load of old rubbish. So she only goes to the company. Dear pals. See Kenneth. Like other people go to the pub, she said. Just an excuse to get out of the house. Do you go to the pub, Michael? You don't mind me calling you Michael, do you? No. Smoke. If you don't smoke, you don't drink, don't gamble. What do you do, Michael? Sex, is that your scene? Come on, Michael, a sly wank in front of Baywatch on a Saturday night's hardly a mortal sin. You go to church, it's like going to the laundrette. There's no point in going unless you've got some stains that you need to wash away. And you're the one that believes in whiter than white, aren't you? Hmm? Me, I'll back. Dishcloth grey is pretty well the colour of everything. You're not a good man, Michael. But you're not a bad one. You're somewhere in between, just like the rest of us. Go on, admit it. Admit to that chocolate bar underneath your pillow. Admit to taking the change when you're undercharged. Admit to lust, envy, avarice. I do. And you have to admit to all those things, Michael, before you can admit to what you did to Joanne. Carry on with this soliloquy. I've got two men's work to do. How long have you been a member of the church, Michael? Ten years. Mm. Who introduced you? No, don't tell me. Kenneth, big brother, he joins, so you had to join. You always do what he does? Correction. Always try to do what he does. But you can't, can you? You don't have the charm. What was it like competing in the sex market with somebody like Kenneth? God, I ache for you. It must have been murder. Always second best, always second choice. Even to the woman you married. Of course, you and Norma were well matched. She was always second choice, too. To Virginia. Her best pal, Virginia, the belle of the bowl. Virginia introduced Norma to Kenneth. He swept her off her feet. She fell head over heels madly in love with him. And the years have not altered her. She still burns for him, still longs to touch him. She's still as obsessed with him now as she was when she first met him. She admits it. She brags about it. She told us this morning, didn't she? Yes. I had to feel sorry for her. How does it feel, Michael? Your wife loves another man. Always has done. I know. You know. I knew when I married her. If you'll excuse me, I have to see to the waste collection. Oh, people 
gonna build like this. You're perfect like like this. this. Spending your days like this. You can call me anything, but do not call me fair. I was built for comfort. I was not built for speed. You should know better. But baby, I'll give you everything you're gonna need. I played that one for years. I always made your mother laugh. Yeah, I've just left them. Have you where? Where? Oh, you come back here. Yeah. You're not too old for a skill. Yes, I am. Yes, you probably are. I never hit you anyway. That time? Oh, yes, once in my life. A light slap, if I remember. You hurt me. Well, you've been bad. I was a kid. Kids don't know anything. Where's your mum and kids? Who was asking? You are your girlfriend. These beans have got mould in them. How can you live like this? What are you off to now? Listen, if you cared, you'd have asked me before now. Don't wait up. Well, look, at least, at least get Katie to keep in touch. Give me a phone or something, will you? coming in for questioning, sir. Willingly. Very willingly. Smug bastard. He's as guilty as hell. We're going right to the edge for the rest of that family, but they all draw the line at Kenneth. Totally obedient. But I'll crack him. I know I can. Cocky, aren't we? I worked out the other day that in my years at the school, between 30 and 40,000 pupils have been through my hands. And there have been tragedies along the way. Leukemia, car crash, climbing accident on a school trip. And now this. And you don't always know the pupils very well. You can't know them all. You always feel it anyway, like one of your own. Mm. It was different in this case, though. In this case, you did know the student. Yes, uh, as I've explained. Yeah, and you must have known her better than most of your students. She was in your fellowship. Well, I dare say, yes. Mm. She must have spoken to you. Of course. What about? Oh, uh, usually matters affecting the church, and Bible studies. And... Oh. Not about school or her home? No, not really. Not even when you drove her home? Drove her home? You say you never drove her home? From the church. Where else? Oh, Hans, I thought you meant from the school. Yeah, yes, of course, I drove home from the church, you know, once in a while. Dark nights. Precisely. Yes. You introduced her to the group at Christmas? Yes. Mm. There'd be a lot of dark nights. Yes. So you must have driven her home quite a few times? Yes, uh, come to think of it, uh, yes, quite often. Um, uh, as you say, after all, uh, I introduced her and being her headmaster... Yes. ...felt responsible. Did she talk in the car? No, she was a very quiet child. What age was she? You don't know her age. No, you called her a child. She was 17. She had her GCSEs. Young woman, I'd say, wouldn't you? Yes. When I was 17, I would have been most offended for you to think of me as a child. Well, of course, um, girls mature more quickly than boys. You know that. I just think she welcomed the chance to talk with an older man. I mean... Fathers are no good, and boys your own age are worse than useless. Well, that may be, but she didn't say much. I was desperate for someone like that. A sort of uncle. So why not kids yourself? I've had 40,000 children. Not the same as having one of your own. I've had a full and fulfilling life. And your wife? She's had a busy life. She does a lot of voluntary work. You miss out, though. No, I would say no, not really. No. No, I suppose you can get quite close to some of your kids. Not in that way. What way? Sorry? That way. What way? There was an insinuation. What were you insinuating, dear Esben Halligan? Like an uncle. Yes. You see, Joanne spoke to me before she died. She wouldn't speak to her parents. 
Couldn't face them. Too ashamed. Ashamed of what? Are you going to tell me or am I going to tell you? I can't tell you what she was ashamed of. She was ashamed. You notice her at a distance at first, coming through the school gates in the morning, lining up for the dinner queue, gazing up at assembly. Slightly different from the other girls, doesn't seem to have a gang. Something rather vulnerable about her. Maybe she's getting bullied. And then one day you see her in the corridor. She's crying. She should be at lessons. You ask her what's wrong. You tell her to come and see you after school. So far, nothing strange, unusual, untoward. You're doing your job. More than your job. Concerned for the pastoral welfare of your students. She's there for an hour in your study. A long chat about the pressure of family not fitting in at school. There are tears. But smiles too. Your heart goes out to her. You comfort her. A friendly arm around the shoulder. A friendly grasp of the hand. A friendly pat of the knee. I get your drift, Doctor. Good. You're sick. Sick as the next man, Mr. Trent. I spent a day in Joanne's company. I'm not immune to her dependence. Her softness. Her fragility. I refuse to participate in this. If you go now, we'll think the worst. We will. Well, by all means, think just that. Yay! 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 Thanks, by the way, Fitz. What for? The drink. One to two. You lose the bet. That's it. Staff's going to be winners, eh? No hard feelings, but we started spending it yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, look, he's you. Kenneth, what will I find? The voice said, cry, and he said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of the field. Very good, Dr. Fitzgerald. Now, how may we help you? She believed you when you told her she was special, didn't she? You've lost me, Doctor. You've always had a way with women, haven't you? Hasn't he, Norma? Why didn't you have an affair with her? She's in love with you. Has been for over 20 years. No, not Norma. Not a woman, not a mature woman. You wouldn't be equal to a woman, would you? Hmm? You need youth, young flesh. This is outrageous. Can he do this? This is a place of worship. Did you wait till she was 16? I bet you did. I bet with your perverted sense of righteousness, you didn't touch her till she was of age. I'll sue you. You get out now, you leave us in peace, or I'll sue you for every penny you've got. She respected you. She thought you were showing her respect. She thought the sun shone out your arse. Any teacher will tell you it is a hazard of the profession. In the same way, Doctor, as a patient may become emotionally attached to a psychologist, may find themselves convinced that the relationship goes beyond the professional, projecting their fantasies onto the therapist. Now, Joanne Barnes was a lonely child. Perhaps she was looking for a special relationship. Perhaps she found it. But it was not me. You had sex with Joanne. She got pregnant. Was that the problem, hmm? Was that why you attacked her? Was that why you stuffed her full of paracetamol, poured gin down her, defiled her body? Was that it? Because she was a danger to all this, your church, your power? I drove Joanne Barnes home a few times, and on the basis of this, I am being accused of rape and murder. I didn't hear any mention of rape. I had no relationship with Joanne Barnes. Then who did? You know who did. You had him in custody. Dean Saunders, that vicious little psychopath. Now, this man, this man is desperate. 
because he had the real killer in custody and he made a dreadful mess of things, didn't you? You drove him to his death in a police cell. Do not project your guilt onto me. I conceal nothing. Dean Saunders didn't write that graffiti on her. You did. And what does it mean? Hmm? What were you thinking of when you wrote all that graffiti all over her body? The instant before the universe began, the chaos beyond the blank wall, that boiling mass of space and time. No law, no meaning, no past, no future. The Big Bang, the instant that the universe was created, the beginning and the end of life, sex and death, your obsession. You see sex in death and death in sex, and beyond that, nothing. That's what your equations tell me, Kenneth. You've got no belief in God. Thank you, Dr. Fitzgerald. Let us continue. And it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion... You're having a crisis of faith, Kenneth. ...a hundred years that remaineth in Jerusalem... ...is God or nothing you cannot have ...even everyone that is written as living in Jerusalem... I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I will extol thee, O Lord. Your religion is a sham. An act of theatre for your dreams of power. Until one day, you start to lose control. And that godlike demeanour starts to deconstruct. And what have you got left? A desperate grope and a hopeless shag in a godless universe. And the voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? Oh, merciful and forgiving God, cleanse our sins. You are made holy by absolving me. Raise your spirits and forgive. 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 They cannot absolve you till you confess. Confess to me. Say it. I'll forgive you. I did it. I tormented her. I disgraced her. I cleansed her and sent her to her God. And Norma? Michael. Yeah. And Virginia? Yes. And Kenneth? Yes. Is a liar. And Dean? No. They wanted me to dispose of Joanne. Package her. I, I asked Dean to help. He let her go. I, I knew he would. He he'd not hurt anyone. Never Joanne. Dean was absolutely innocent. He, he always was. And you'd be prepared to make a statement to that effect? Oh, yes. What made you so sure? About what? That he'd crack. I wasn't. He didn't. He won't. He won't confess. But now that we got the statement... Nah, he'll deny all that. He'll blame Michael and Dean and say it was nothing to do with him. And the women will back him up. They can't. They will. They will. Such is the power of faith or sex. Or self-preservation. Mm. Michael will be testifying against them. It'll be their word against his. Do you know what we need? What? A miracle. <laughs> You'll have to perform it yourself, Fitz. Nah, not me. I know my limitations, Panhandle. What you see is what you get. Imperfect. Our sex god, but imperfect.